Natalie Bensavanga. And I'm Tony Norman. And this is In Other News, the podcast that is not afraid to go there. Where? Anywhere the story takes us. You concerned about speaking your mind? Me? Yeah, right. You? Ha! <laughs> Let's go, Nat. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to In Other hey, News. Nat. Hey, What's Tony. What's going on? All right. Not much. Well, here we are. Episode four. Episode four it is. Can you believe it? I'm glad we got here. I think we needed to prove it to ourselves. <laughs> yes, we have it in us. Well, you know, there is so much to talk about. I don't want to waste really any time. There have been some big things brewing and um, in the ether, literally and figuratively. Yeah. And yeah. there has been a terrible environmental disaster that finally mainstream media is beginning to speak on um, in East Palestine, Ohio. Absolutely. That has spilled over into Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's talk about it. What have you been hearing and and how are you feeling about it? Well, um, as a resident of Western Pennsylvania, which mm-hmm. is um, less, is literally just less than an hour away yeah. from where we are. Um, I'm concerned. I mean, I'm concerned yeah. about I'm concerned about the people there. They're people who are effectively our neighbors. Mm-hmm. Um, they're dealing with an unprecedented uh, disaster of, of proportion. I mean, we've seen t- train derailments across the country for years and years, mm-hmm. but there is something so insidious and sinister about this one because yeah. it was avoidable. Yes. This disaster was avoidable. And it's going to affect the lives of, of, of hundreds, if not thousands of people. And it's going to affect the economies going forward because, you know, the stakes are really high now. We all realize that now. Yes, the stakes are really high. And for people that may not know, um, a train derailed and dumped one million pounds of vinyl chloride. And the EPA said it has now entered the Ohio River Basin, which is home to 25 million people. So this went from an issue that impacted a local community to now an entire region, right, which right. is also very concerning. And now we're seeing the impact is going to be spilling over into Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, it's already in in Beaver. There's there's some evidence that it could be in the water and the soil in Butler. Right. And what's fascinating to me about this whole thing, to your point, is about the preventability of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the reality that the that the train company uh, Norfolk didn't really do anything to improve safety measures. Right. Um, they fought against it. They um, fought against it. They were having longer cars and mm-hmm. less crew. All of this was sort of ripe. You know, they 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 were right. courting the government to help with that deregulation. You know, mm-hmm. we want to have that freedom of business. But mm-hmm. what about my freedom to have clean air and clean water and not to have dead fish, dead chickens, dead pets when I walk outside my door? And ultimately dead people and uh, ultimately as the cancer people. rates rise. Mm-hmm. And the fact is, is that... Um, um, you know, this was a decision um, made by um, the, the the train company to um, not be subject to mandatory um, laws uh, Im- imposed for environmental reasons. Um, the pneumatic brakes that would go the length of the trains um, were uh, President Obama wanted those things to be mandated yes and congress went along with that uh initially Mm -hmm. but then when it came to time for the time of implementation implementation um you know we had a different president and we had president trump who wanted to roll back all of these um sort of nanny state um what he calls um violations of you know free enterprise Mm -hmm. and so um you know, you know what a nanny stops you from doing? Killing yourself exactly. when you're a kid, right? Isn't that That's something? why you have a babysitter. Or right, a nanny. right. I, I love how we've co-opted these words like they're totally always negative, but it's ac- actually maybe children shouldn't be running around by themselves <laughs> when their parents aren't home. And maybe companies should be held to the people and held accountable well, to yeah. the people, right? Well, we're all libertarian now. Oh, so, boy. you know, that's how it goes. Oh, and so, boy. You, so you end up with, um, with, with Trump basically rolling back the mandate, yeah. and now you it, because it was like you know that's a tax on industry, mm-hmm. and, you know, and also um, Trump also made it unnecessary for the um, the, tr- the rail companies to let communities know in advance that yes. they're coming through 
with toxic material. So you have these two mile long trains yes. that are going through rural communities Ooh, like this. Like a nuclear bomb. Just waiting. They are nuclear mm-hmm. bombs. They're they're basically you're 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 playing Russian roulette mm-hmm. with your community. What's what's interesting to me too was how the media was reporting on this because at first it was crickets. Right. You know, it was I was seeing things popping up a little bit on my Instagram feed from very fringe right. sites. Um, and then I started noticing, okay, there there is more conversation. And mm-hmm. then I had heard a reporter had been arrested mm-hmm. um when they were on the site. And so there there seemed to be a lot of tension, confusion, but the mainstream media has finally started speaking out about it. But what was interesting was how they've been framing it, that this small town is looking for sort of a payout right. when what these people want are answers and accountability. And I right. find that fascinating because had this gone through you know, a, a wealthier neighborhood in a suburb of oh. Pittsburgh, do you think that framing of that narrative would have been the same? Oh, of course not. Of course not. I mean, this these communities, you know, like East Palestine, um, are forgotten. They're that's the forgotten America yes. that um, that the, the Republicans claim they care so much about. They, they, right, right. That you know, in fact, these um, communities do vote overwhelmingly Republican. Mm-hmm. And ironically enough, um, the fact that this issue um, that this derailment became fodder for Republicans. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Talking points is probably what made it surface uh, yeah. as a you know as a news item, and now it's at the point where it is officially pl- um, push balloons off the front page, and now oh, it's balloons. like yeah, now we're like talking about something that is everyone can relate to. Well, you know, and and speaking of how everyone can relate to it, when we're talking about Beaver County, Butler, you know, I go to farmers markets in the summer and in the springtime, and I'm sure that you do too. And a lot of our produce comes from those rural communities. And so this really does have, you know, it, it, it's, it has real life implications for people right in our own neighborhoods. And, and when we talk about how everything is connected, right. this is what we're talking about. Elections matter, mm-hmm. who we're allowing to represent us matters, mm-hmm. how we allow uh, companies to function and corporations to function in right. our society matters. You know, everyone should be held accountable and public safety should always be placed over profits, in right, my opinion. Right. Or what's the point? You know, the, the fact is, is that when you do go to your farmer's market and you find out that the onions and your asparagus, asparagus and all of your favorite veggies and food, you know, also ha- now have possibly trace residue of chemicals that, yeah. that came from, you know, a derailment, it, it, it outrages you. But I mean, even before that, what's happened to these these people mm. um, in in East Palestine? You know, they do you go back into your house? <laughs> do you you know you you see all of this um, residue and soot on your cars mm. and on the roof of your house, and you you smell and see the dead fish and the, and all of the little it's apocalyptic. It's, it's apocalyptic. you might as well just you know uh, worry about. Uh, I'd rather deal with zombies than than something like this because you have nothing, you have no place to go. Well, and I think this all comes back to what I'm hearing you say is this idea of inequity. Mm -hmm. And and the inequity is also increased in many ways. And it's increased by our, you know, inequity in education as well. And there's something really interesting going on um, here. A a long-awaited Commonwealth court ruling was handed Uh. down recently in Pennsylvania, declaring our school funding system unconstitutional. And I think all of these tie-ins to environmental justice, racial justice, all of this comes back to who has access to learning, who has access to quality education, and how does the next generation access that education so they go in as informed citizens Mm -hmm. and as informed voters so Mm -hmm. these kinds of things maybe don't happen as much in our future. You know, we took took our foot off the gas pedal. Right. And now our kids are going to suffer. Right, right. And it was good news um, that this um, uh, judgment came down because it does give us hope that the inequity in our and you know in our t- tax base when it comes to funding education is no longer going to be tolerated. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, they did not present a plan to right. to implement this. And Baby so, steps, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have to. This will be hashed out in the legislature, you know, yeah. for God knows how long. But it is um, the beginning of the end of what is effectively educational apartheid in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And, you know, to kind of wrap this up, I mean, now that we're talking about how we become informed citizens, how we become 
educated uh, so we can stand up to corporations and and stand up for the people. It really comes down to who has access to voting. Mm -hmm. Um, And recently, there's been a conversation that has started that Pennsylvania is considering switching to open primaries, Mm. which means, you know, normally, if you're a Democrat, you can just vote for Democrats during the primary, and then that'll be the person that goes against Mm -hmm. the Republican or vice versa. But there's huge swaths of people that are unaffiliated with any uh, party, and they are left out of the primary um, you know, opportunity, right. so to speak, to vote. What are your thoughts on the idea of open primaries? What do you think that would do to our election system here in PA? Well, it's, I don't know what it'll do to our election system, but I think it would be the fair thing to do mm-hmm. and the most intellectually honest and the most democratic thing to do. Because you do have millions of people who, for whatever reason, don't want to declare themselves Democrats or Republicans. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we should have a system that can accommodate them. They're still an important part um, of the process of selecting our leaders. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the more the merrier. Yeah. What it will do to our system, I think it will make it fair mm-hmm. uh, here in Pennsylvania, but um, obviously there are going to be lots of arguments contrary to that, and I, I'd be interested in hearing those. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm always interested in hearing from other people and their perspectives on these topics. And lucky for you guys, we have a wonderful guest coming up. Her name is Miracle Jones, and she is with One Hood Media. So stay tuned and join us for The Drill Down. You're listening to In Other News. Thanks for joining us. All right, everybody, we are back and it is time for the drill down. And I'm so excited. And I know, yeah, Tony did a little like hand gesture. He's excited too for this week's guest, um, Miracle Jones. She is the director of policy and advocacy at One Hood. I have known Miracle for many years in the community. And in the last few years, we've done some co emceeing and, and fun things in the community together. And it is such a joy to see you and your fabulous glasses with us today. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so like beyond honored that like one, y'all know who I am. (laughs) And two, you have me on your program. Like, congratulations. Um, This is amazing. I know you have some pretty cool guests. And I uh, love the write up that Josh did about y'all for the pup news. So like, congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I knew there was a reason, a good reason to have you on there. <laughs> She's so our cheerleader. You're, you're really confirming yeah. all of that. And uh, and as in, everyone knows, I'm a big, big One Hood fan. In fact, yes, I'm yes. usually rocking a, a One it's Hood true. sweatshirt. You we know, get the screenshots. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Just serious, like, look at this. He wore it again. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah, yeah. I have a limited wardrobe, but also because I believe in the work that One Hood is doing. Yes. So. You know, props to all of you folks. And um, yeah, I'm so glad you're there. Yeah. And and we've both, like Tony said, have been fans of One Hood and your work for so long. And when you're thinking about the importance of this organization, why did you want to join One Hood? Can you tell everybody a little bit about it in case they aren't aware of what One Hood is mm-hmm. and the importance of this space, especially in this current political and media c- landscape? Yes, thank you so much for that, uh, Natalie. One Hood Media is a social justice arts organization based here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And primarily, we you, we talk to youth about media, how to tell their own stories, how to present themselves, and also how to actually decipher, before we call it misinformation and disinformation, how to decipher what the news was saying and how to pay attention to some of the false, um, basically, I would call them lies, but sometimes, you know, the um, falsities that are pushed out by media. And the, we came about because there was a report that surveyed local media and it basically said, if you were Black, the only time you saw yourself in the news is if it was basically over 80% related to crime or um, entertainment. And in, in the world where there are multiple sports teams here in the city, you're not really giving people any type of diversity or representation when it comes to media. And it's very, very important because media is how we learn about each other. A lot of people may not leave their neighborhoods. A lot of people may not have the privilege to travel. So media is how we learn and engage. And when we're talking about fighting hate, when we're talking about building 
these cities and bridges if because of media you're afraid to reach out for someone who doesn't look like you or believe like you you're going to create a lot of bigotry and so for us we found it was very important not only to train people about the way media works, but also train youth how to engage media, how to be a part of media, and to also partner with media and other um, arts organizations to create and tell our own stories. And it's been very, very unfortunate, but very necessary that we had to do this. And one of the reasons, for instance, one of the programs we had was what Black Pittsburgh needs to know was because at the very beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, right. there are people yeah. saying Black people can't get COVID. Mm. And then there were there were meetings where medical providers weren't even talking about the Black population. Yeah. And their response was, well, there are, no black, there are no Black doctors who care about this. There are no Black infectious disease doctors. <laughs> you know, there are no Black pulmonary cardiologists. And we were like, okay, so clearly we're going to have to elevate some people right. um, so you know what's going on in our communities. And this, mm -hmm. again, Unfortunately, um, I hate talking from a deficit resource position, but we had to come in and fill that deficit because it wasn't there. Right. And, and that's one of the um, the most, um, I think, um, exciting things about One Hood, because you go online and you can see these shows, these programs, especially when we were all locked, locked down. Um, you, could, you could have really uh, informed discussions about um covid and about it's, it's like when we couldn't go to the barber shop this was the next best thing when we couldn't go to the hairdresser this was like the next big you know best thing we 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 had experts um talking to you folks about you know what's going on separating fact from myth and it was a real public service at a time that um we really needed it yeah. And, and you touched on something, Miracle, I wanted to ask you to expand on when you were talking about educating people on misinformation and, and you know, the disinformation. Can you give our uh, listeners um, some tips on how they can decipher that? Because we're all about action steps in the show and, and solutions driven media. And I love that you're making those ties. And I love that One Hood does that so, so well. So what are some tips people can do if they're um, looking at a news article and they aren't sure what to make of it? Um, one thing you can do is check your primary source. If the person says the governor of Pennsylvania said A, B, and C, you can go to the governor of Pennsylvania's website, their Twitter, their Facebook. So one, check your primary sources. Two, see who, uh, who else is reporting information. I know right now a lot of us are maybe obsessed with what's going on in East Palestine with, you know, the train derailment. And we've seen people pull videos from five years ago, pull mm. videos from overseas and say, oh, this is what's happening in East Palestine, Ohio. And so another thing you want to do is find local sources. And I know right now we've been fighting the corporate takeover of journalism. Yes. But local journalists are going to be your primary news sources, the people who are on the ground. And and the third thing I would say is check the organization themselves. Like yes. some people will tell you in their about us page what they do. Are they a parody page? Are they a news page? Are they an opinion page? And that also will let you know how what their frame of reference are, is going to be. You're very um, smart. And then, and the last thing, what I, um, especially if you use Google, Google image search is very important. You can populate an image and search that image to see where it's coming from. Because even me, myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, have you seen this? And they're like, yeah, I saw this eight years ago. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, it happens to all of us. That's very fair. <laughs> you know? um, and That's so a great can, tip. I didn't realize that. And so you can populate and, and research some of the things so you can can find stuff and also snopes.com mm -hmm. and i'll say the last thing they're a really good um, resource because they tell you if stuff is fake or not they'll give you the primary uh, resources and you can uh, make your judgments from there mm -hmm. are you optimistic about um the pittsburgh um, media echo system um despite this strike i mean do you think that there are going to be enough sources for people locally to draw upon to get, uh, to really truly be informed on what's happening in this community. 
I do. I do. I think that what we really have seen is that Pittsburgh, outside of being a union town, Mm -hmm. is that we really like our journalists. So you have the Pop News, you have, you know, Next Pittsburgh, you have the Institute for uh, Nonprofit Journalism, you have um, Black Pittsburgh, uh, you have um, the Soul Pit, you have Brother Ash Productions. So you have a lot of people. What about the Courier? You, you didn't mention right, the Courier. Right, the Courier. <laughs> I was like, Uh-oh. Tony, there's quite a few. Oh, no. I was like, she was flowing. She was doing it. I was going there. I was like, what is Rob's publication? <laughs> Rob will, Rob will call right. me, but he forgot me. But no, you you have, you have, you have the, the Pittsburgh Courier, the oldest black news um, journalism serving not only Pittsburgh, but also this region and the country. You have the Courier. You also um, have a lot of uh, your neighborhood you know, observers and right. your neighborhood magazines. So you have a lot of people doing the work. I think that a lot of corporations weren't really expecting the fight that they've been having and they thought it would have been easier but because we know how important the media is in this region i think we're in a good spot i hope that we soon won't have to keep fighting and i hope that a lot of these um wins um at the union table will really force a lot of these corporations to rethink Mm. their strategy and their need for disinformation um as a profit point and just go back to letting journalists do their job yeah. And, and speaking of doing their jobs, one of my favorite shows that you guys do over at One Hood is This Week and White Supremacy. That was sort of one of the first things recently in the last couple of years that I really was attracted to. Is Was it intentional to make that a weekly show? Did you intend it to be a kind of a one-off because you saw something one week and you thought we should do this? And was it intentional to be more at that national lens? And can you talk a little bit about the background to that show? I love that show. I love This Week in White Supremacy. It is our most controversial show. It's probably why I like um, it. <laughs> it is our most controversial show. It is the show that has tried, people have tried to get us canceled for and our funding pulled for. Um, and oh, wow. so it's not an easy, it's not an easy show. We're talking about white supremacy because people keep saying that white supremacy does not exist in this region mm. and that white supremacy is a thing of the past. And that's one of the reasons why we started the show was to talk about what white supremacy is and how it impacts all of us because a lot of people think of just like the clan and that's it but it's like you gotta think about we destroyed neighborhoods here in the city of Pittsburgh because we said that they had no value Mm -hmm. and we have so many racial disparities that happens because of white supremacy and it's not that you are a bad person or I am a bad person but we're operating like in these systems and we were talking about from a national level from a local level we're talking about how even black people can be white supremacists Mm -hmm. and people never had even thought had that thought process in their minds and so that was one of the reasons that we did the show we were like oh it's probably gonna be like two weeks three weeks a month tops and now (laughs) It's like there's so much to cover. <laughs> there's so there's much there. white supremacy to, to comment on. I mean, you do it every and, day. And <laughs> it's like it's every day. And then when we get the alert that like, hey, you know, Tree of Life happened. Mm. And then we get January 6th. And then we get the alert talking about um, there are active white supremacist militias that are armed. And they there are, are a plethora in Pennsylvania. People are like, oh what you're saying has value. And when the FBI is like, hey, um, you need to be careful, or when we even ourselves have been targets of white supremacist threats and violence, we're like, okay, this is why we do this work. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, uh, it's we try to bring humor into it because there's nothing funny about uh, jumping a girl in the bathroom in Mount Lebanon because she has a hijab on, right? There's nothing funny about seeing flyers, those flyers in Squirrel Hill. But when we're, we try to bring humor to it so people can feel like there is so something that they can do about it, as well as have the tools and resources to identify. Right, Miracle, right. we absolutely love having you. And I, we're going to have to have you back because I have like a whole list of more questions that I just wanted to get to. Um, but we would love to hear just some things that you would like to share that you're working on before we wrap this up or where people can learn more about you and your work. 
Um, yeah, so my, my baby project, my first project is uh, Brunch with a Black Man. As you know, I have a, a master's in social work yes. and a part of COVID-19. And even before, I really was having conversations about it with a bunch of Black men about like their mental health mm-hmm. and how they can take on their mental health journey. So we launched Brunch with a Black Man with Emay from your mom's house and the Stanton Farms Foundation. Um, and so we just sit down with Black men over brunch and talk about like their mental health journeys. And they're very like the Diverse, so there is no one size fits all solution when you have like a mental health diagnosis or a traumatic experience. So that's the biggest thing, and that's at um, One Hood Media's YouTube page. It'll be on Facebook um, in two months, uh, but you can watch that Saturdays at noon on um, our Facebook page. You can watch This Week in White Supremacy Wednesdays at noon on One Hood Media's Facebook uh, and YouTube pages. We have a lot of great things happening, and if you follow us online. Um, one Hood Media. I'm at Love Miracle J on Twitter. So always follow, keep in contact. We have events happening all the time. And so again, thank you, thank you, thank you, Tony and Natalie for having me on. I'm so excited. Oh, it's our pleasure. And uh, yeah, I mean, One Hood Media, uh, you guys are are doing incredible work there. And thank goodness you're here in the city. Uh, our region would be much poorer and, and less... Uh, culturally relevant if you weren't here. So, so thank you. Thanks again, Miracle. And we hope to have you back with us very soon. Yes. Thank you. you. You're listening to in other news. Thanks for tuning in. You know, Tony, I always love having guests on like Miracle Jones because she's really emblematic of how collective liberation can happen when we all work together and how you can use media towards that goal. And I like to dabble a little bit with media outside of our project. I don't know if you've just noticed. A little, just a little <laughs> here and there. I mean, you're just pretty much, um, you're everywhere, but yeah, okay. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so I have this weekly show on, on Instagram called Facts Over Fear, and I try to drill down on topics that are happening at the national level. And recently I did one with what is going on with the abortion pill and an activist judge out of Texas who was appointed by Donald Trump who would basically like to have the FDA remove it from the shelves right. over citing safety concerns, even though it's been out for over two decades now. Right, right. And really what this lends itself to, not only from a national lens, but really here in Pittsburgh, is how is this going to impact women and birthing people if yet again our bodily autonomy in a post-Roe world is on the chopping block? And do you think that this is something that could actually happen because I didn't think Roe would ever get overturned. So what are your thoughts about them trying to remove the abortion pill, which over 50% of people that need access to abortion services, this is what they use. I thought, here we go again. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of an insidious way of backdooring the removal of people's rights. Mm. Uh, And it's so obvious that it's shocking. And it shouldn't shock us because everything's being done right in um, broad day- daylight these mm-hmm. days. And these activist mm-hmm. judges are not apologizing for the fact that they don't believe that women should have bodily uh, autonomy. And so um, we have to take that into consideration when we vote, whenever we go to the polls. Um, there, when, you, when you vote for a particular person or party sometimes, this is part of the package. It's a package deal. This is part of the deal. And what we're seeing, you know, is Planned Parenthood and Allegheny Reproductive Health Center, uh, New Voices for Reproductive Justice. These are all spaces that work towards that liberation as right. it pertains to reproductive justice. But we're being inundated in Pennsylvania and in particular here in Pittsburgh with women and birthing people from across different states having to come here because we've lost so much access to rights over our own bodies. Mm-hmm. So if this is an issue that matters to you, and it should matter to everyone because it's an economic issue as right. well. If if people are taken out of the workforce because they can't, you know, perform because they're, they've now got children that they're saddled with that they, you know, couldn't support mm-hmm. or didn't want to support, um, this creates a whole ripple effect. And we all know we don't have paid family leave. We don't have universal health care. We don't have child care. We have nothing set up to deal with the ramifications of what continues to happen. And so if you want to be able to get involved, you can support, you know, Planned Parenthood of Western PA, you can support Allegheny Reproductive Health Center, you can support uh, New Voices for Reproductive Justice. And we're also going to put all of these links um, on our page, along with a lot of action items around um, the health and safety of our air and water. So there's a lot of ways to get involved, which always gives me hope, you know? Yeah. 
And I think the the one thing that everyone has to do is vote. Yes. Because that under you know that is the the foundation of protecting your rights. Maybe as an action item, just constant on the page, we should just have you know how you register to vote as a as a. That That'll just like be a I great like that. idea. Look at us doing this in real time. <laughs> We're going to update that page so you can always find a way um, to figure out how you can vote where you go to vote and all of those things. So until next time, you know, this is Tony and I just saying, take care of yourselves and each other. And it's always good being with you, Tony. All right. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs>